Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and sanctify us. You are the vine, and we are your branches. Let our lives, our words, flow from you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is faithful to fulfill his promises. It is very likely you may have made promise to God today, such as, Lord, if you can heal me, I will serve you forever. Am I right? You may have made promise to God today that, Lord, if you can bless me, I will worship you with all I have. Many promises are easily made without real consideration and their complications. I don't know the promise you have made before the Almighty God. Many promises are easily made without real consideration of their complications. But the Bible says, true or genuine promise must express itself in obedience and commitment to God. In the book of 4 Samuel, chapter 1, when you read from verse 8, Anna realized this. That there was a need for her to make a promise to God who searches the heart of man and gives as he pleases. I know we all know the story of Anna in the Bible. She made her supplication with an eye to the tender mercy of our God who knows every troubled soul. The Bible says, Anna begged for a child and made a solemn promise. She promised if God could give her a son, she would give it back to God. I don't know what you are asking for. Anna was willing to give back to God what she was asking for. What are you asking God for? Are you sure you are ready to give back to God your time, your strength, your loyalty, your commitment when your needs are met? Indeed, it is very proper, brethren. Whenever we are in pursuit of mercy for anything to bind our soul, with a bond, a promise that if God will give it to us, we will devote it to his honor and cheerfully use it in his service. Viewers all around the world, those who are under the influence of these broadcasts, in hope for God's mercy, brethren, let us promise duty. And this will brings me to the title of this message. Remember your humble beginnings. Tell your neighbor, remember your humble beginnings. Remember how you began. You see, new position, new connections have led many to a complete disregard of their humble beginnings. New connections, new position had led many today into a complete disregard of their humble beginnings. When blessings comes, all things are passed away so soon. When miracle comes, all things are passed away so soon. Today, it is common for man to promise so much, but to do little or nothing when their needs are met. 
pleasure we know usually turns the hearts of man off his creator. Pleasure we know usually turn our time, our love, our loyalty off our creator. Pleasure is usually accompanied with pride and self-importance. Therefore, it takes a maturity that comes from faith, brethren, to realize that our responsibility to God is a commitment and fellowship with him rather than sacrifice. Whatever promise you have made or about to make, brethren, be sure it is not a leap promise. Now, let's turn our Bible quickly to the book of First Samuel and let us take our time to read about Anna. The book of First Samuel, after the book of Ruth, Samuel chapter 1, and let's take our reading from verse 10. The Bible says that Anna was in deep anguish, praying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. She made this vow, O Lord of heavens of armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his heir will never be caught. Verse 20. And it came to a time, the Bible says, in a due time, she gave birth to a son. Hmm. She named him Samuel. For she said, I asked the Lord for him. Now, Anna went back with this little boy, as young as he was, back to the temple. And she said to the prophets, Sir, do you remember me? Anna asked, I am the woman who stood here several years ago praying to the Lord. I asked the Lord to give me this boy and he has granted my request. Now I am giving him back to the Lord and he will belong to the Lord for his whole life. Now let's quickly go to the same for Samuel chapter 2 from verse 20. This is our main proof text for this message. Now, you know, the Bible made us to understand that Anna usually pay a visit yearly to the same boy. Before they return home, Eli, which is the prophet, would bless Elkanah, which is Anna's husband, and his wife, Anna, and say to them, may the Lord give you other children to take the place of the one you gave to the Lord. Verse 21, and the Lord gave Anna three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, some will grow up in the presence of the Lord. God is faithful, powerful to his faithful servants. Remember, Anna could have kept Samuel to herself after so much pain of childlessness. We know many mothers here what it means to seek for a particular thing. Anna could have kept Samuel to herself after so much pain of childlessness, thereby limited God's power to Samuel alone. Imagine this. If she had kept her focus only on Samuel, a large slice of life, would have passed her by. A large slice of life would have passed her by. She could have changed the history in that book of First Samuel, chapter 2, verse 21. You see, God oftentimes blesses us in a way that we do not expect. Anna never expected to have a child at her age, much less six children. Six 
children. What do we learn from here? When we know, brethren, viewers all over the world, that there is no limit to our need of God, we should be more committed to him. And nothing would shake our faith in him. Remember, our obedience is our only proof of our faith in God. Today, many are waiting for a more convenient time to appreciate, to acknowledge the giver of their blessings. Many people today are waiting, looking for a more convenient time to acknowledge, to appreciate the giver of their blessings. You know, if you are waiting for a co more convenient time to do that, that time may never come. Most of the blessings that we promise to be dedicated to God, where are they today? Just think about those promises you made when there is no money in your pockets. Those promises you made to God when there is no food on the table. How many of them have you fulfilled? Tell your neighbor, remember how you began. Whatever you are about to receive, brethren, you must know the purpose of that blessing. Otherwise, you would do stupid things that will cost you that very blessing. You must know the purpose of the healing you are about to receive. The purpose of the blessings. Most of the contracts that we are looking for. The blessings that we are looking for in the presence of God. You must know the purpose of them. Otherwise, when those blessings come, new life comes, you will do stupid things that might cost you that very blessing. When we are in need, our words, our speech are mostly appealing, gentle, and calm. But the moment our needs are met, our words become commanding, forceful, and instructive. That is why the Bible says, by nature, man is rebellious, unless God removes the barrier. No one, no one can exercise faith. We all know that when we pray, we all expect God to crown our requests with all his glory and success that will make us the center of our own world. But God knows that success has many dangers, many temptations of his own. Many will say, but long time I've been asking for this. I even made a promise that God should heal me. Who knows if you had been healed a long time ago, what would have happened to you? Who knows if you had been blessed a long time ago, what could have become of you? God knows that success has many dangers, many temptations of his own. Today many aspire to make a living, but do not desire to make a difference. Many aspire to become rich, but do not desire to impact lives. Many blessings today cannot stand the test of time because we fail to see to look beyond the blessing itself. A life without faith, the Bible says, is a life without God. A life without faith is a life without God. I want you to always remember the nine lepers in the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 12. You take your time to read. The Bible says this nine lepers saw their blessing as the end in itself. But the one who returned saw his blessing, his healing as a means to an end, not the end in itself. He realized that faith honors Jesus Christ the most. 
And Jesus Christ honors faith the most. Just as we need faith to receive, as the book of Hebrews says, we also need faith to maintain what you are about to receive. Therefore, blessings, healing, deliverance, we receive on the basis of faith are comfortable and long-lasting. What is your situation? Viewers all over the world, what is your situation? Jesus knows a cry born of faith, a cry born of sincerity and humility of heart. Remember, whatever that does not come from the heart, whatever that does not come from your heart, is mere deceit and hypocrisy. God looks beyond every word you say, every promise you make in his presence. Today, many miracles are delayed because God knows that when we get to the top, our spiritual life can gradually deteriorate. So it takes so much time in considering our requests for the reason known to him alone. Anywhere from now, brethren, your life will change. Yeah. By the mercy of the Lord, any moment from now, your life will change. Yeah. Those who knows you to be a sick one will soon see you as an healthy person. Yeah. Those who knows you to be a failure will soon see you as a successful person. Yeah. But the question is, are you going to continue to be faithful, committed, obedience to him? Viewers all over the world, are you sure you will continue to maintain your quality time with God? Tell your neighbor, don't forget how you began. Always remember your humble beginnings. Always remember your humble beginnings. As we bring this message to an end. For those whose lives are centered in Christ Jesus, the best is always yet to come. No matter the enjoyment, the fame, popularity, position, possession that comes their way. The question is, is your life centered in Christ Jesus. Ask your neighbor, is your life centered in Christ Jesus? If your life is centered in Christ Jesus, you will always see whatever you receive, healing, deliverance, blessing, as a means to an end and not the end in itself. The salvation of your soul. You will always see the need to be at Jesus' feet, to learn more, to be committed, to be loyal, to be obedient. Just as the book of First John, chapter 2, verse 15 says, do not allow the magnetic attractions of this world to pull you away from God. Because all those blessings that you're talking about, they are charming temptation to the carnally minded. Always remember today. For you to maintain today, you must see a reason beyond today. For you to maintain that healing, that blessing, you must see a reason beyond those blessings. You know, it is very easy to receive, but very difficult for a lot of people to maintain. So at this point in time, I want us to burden our head with sincerity and humility of heart. Ask Jesus Christ to grant you the grace not to be ignorant of your faith under pressure of temptations. Ask Jesus Christ to give you the grace to maintain all you have promised. Ask him to give you the wonderful grace to always remember how you began your humble beginnings. 
Remember when God removes his grace, withdraws his grace from us, nothing good in us will remain. We become shadow of our original self. But if we turn to God, but if we turn to God once, he will turn to us multiple times. If we turn to him once, he will turn to us multiple times. God's works of wonders are of grace. They command our faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Viewers all over the world, this message is simply telling us this message is telling us that we are simply enjoying God's grace. And grace means not by power and not by might. May the Lord bless his word in the midst of your hearts in Jesus' name. Good morning and win today.